Right, changing the coolant. Slightly undid these three bolts here. Pulled this out and it's gone everywhere. Um, I've no idea how good the coolant was that was in that. But that's fine. That's pretty much got most of it out. Now I'm going to flush it through with water and then drain it again. Then I will flush it through with 50-50 distilled white vinegar and distilled water and run the bike to get it warm to get uh, that going through the engine. Then drain that out and replace with new antifreeze. There is one other thing that I need to do and it's this air bleed here. There, I need to undo that and there's going to be a bit of old coolant in there. So I've now drained out the old coolant and it's gone all over the place as you can see. I have flushed through for eight pints worth of water, two of them, uh, through the system and let that drain out as well. Everything that was coming out was absolutely clear in the end. And now I have uh, just loosely tightened up those nuts again. Uh, and I'm about to fill up with distilled water and distilled vinegar. So I'm just running the engine, just getting it warmed up. For a few minutes, I'll just see if there's any fluid coming out. I was expecting a bit of smoke to come from the engine with the fluid that had been on there, but there's nothing coming off. Just burning off from the outside. So I'll leave that running for a little bit, caps on, and then I'll drain it again and I'll fill it with the coolant and then I'm done. Okay, so I've drained the vinegar solution out. And I've now flushed with clean water again. I'll probably give it another four pints of clean water flushing out. Flushing it through. Before I fill up with the coolant solution. This is the last lot of clean water. Clear out the vinegar. Now the vinegar idea, instead of using a flush, that came from a website called Ice Engine or Engine Ice. And it's because it's got its acidic qualities. The vinegar helps to clear out any of the crap that's in there. And I'll just let this clear out for a few minutes. Make sure everything's out. Wiggle the bike around a bit. Let's 
get these last drops out and then I'll tighten up the bolts as tight as I can without knackering the threads and fill up with my diluted concentrate and the concentrate the specific one or the antifreeze I'm using OAT antifreeze and coolant this is a concentrate I've 50 50 it with uh, distilled water silicate free organic additive technology protects against corrosion overheating and freezing and it's ethylene glycol based with corrosion inhibitors and it's safe safe for aluminium engines so I'll just tighten everything up and then I'll have to bleed it afterwards okay this antifreeze wants to be added slowly to make sure you don't spill and to reduce the chances of air bubbles and that seems to be about one and a quarter litres lid back on give it a good shake to dislodge any air bubbles I'll just check to see that it has got enough in there it's around about the minimum mark I need to put a little bit more in okay that shaking actually made quite a difference and now down to the half litre mark so I've put in one and a half litres there and I'm just going to bleed this nipple I won't be talking because I've got the torch in my mouth I don't know if you saw any bubbles coming out then, but there was a, just a few. And I can hear, I can hear air that's going. We've gone down to about the minimum mark. So I'll add a little bit more. Just nearly on the maximum mark. It looks all orangey and rusty in there, but I know it's brand new. Maybe it never needed doing in the first place. Well, there we have it. Everything's been checked over, run the engine a few times, turn it off, check the levels get rid of excess or top up perfect job in the garage for a cold wet snowy day so I'll get the car in and I'll put the bike away